Greetings and welcome, internet friends. Welcome to a brand new section of geometry. That's right, the math that you've been dreaming of, the shapes of which our universe can be described with. Uh, yeah, we're going we're gonna to learn it. Okay, there we go. I lost a little energy. I didn't know where I was going with that intro, but here we go. Uh, today we're talking about points, lines, and planes. This is section 1.1 of your big ideas geometria textbook and uh first off let's get a definition of undef undefined that's weird all right uh it says in geometry the words point line and plane are undefined terms these words do not have formal definitions there is agreement uh, about what they mean all right so that's kind of weird all right here we go a point has no dimension all right so it doesn't have a width a height a length uh and uh graphically speaking if i wanted to represent it i would i would represent that point with a dot uh and so a point is a location it could be on a one-dimensional line a two-dimensional plane or a three-dimensional space uh right so that's what a, a point is uh we label points in geometry with capital letters uh most typically and uh you could also refer to it as point a okay I'm getting it. A point. I understand. Here we go. So a line has one dimension. Uh, it is represented by a line with two arrowheads, so it does travel infinitely in both of those directions. Uh, it extends without end. Don't let that freak you out. It just keeps going forever in both of those directions. That can freak people out. Like infinitely many. Yeah, the number of points on the line, there are infinitely many of them. Also, how many points are there between A and B? Also, infinitely many of them. What's the closest point I could pick to B? Let's say it was right here. Well, guess what? There's infinitely many points closer to B than that point that I picked. Uh, that can scare some people because lines are like infinitely large and then infinitesimally small that you could like zoom in. You could pinch to zoom over and over and there would still be more points. And uh, my wife, for instance, she has a fear of infinity. Uh, it's called apirophobia. Uh, well, yeah, just thinking about like large like quantities of numbers can freak her out a little bit. So, if you have a pyrophobia, I'm sorry, it's too late. I freak you out. Let's see. A plane has two dimensions. It is represented by a shape that looks like a floor or a wall. Feel free to look around the room at a floor or a wall. There you go. See, you were able to visualize it so effectively now. Uh, it is represented by a shape that looks like a floor or wall, but it extends without end. So imagine this is going infinitely in all of those directions. So it's a, a two-dimensional surface, right? Two dimensions. Uh, and through any three points, not on the same line, there is exactly one plane. So if I have three points, you could imagine a plane that makes that up. Uh, if I have, for instance, a uh, box, a cube, or something like that, if you will, you could imagine, right, this point, this point, and this point, you would know exactly which face of that box I was talking about, right? This is the plane that is shared between those three points. Whereas if I had, like, this point, and this point, and this point, that would be, right, this face over here, right? You guys can imagine that. Now, question if... Uh, let's see, let's see if I draw some dotted lines here. Do, 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 do. Is there, all right, here's a question. Is there a plane that passes through this point and this point and this point? Hmm. Yeah, it's, it's not one of the faces of the box, but it's like a diagonal, right, in this case, it would be represented somewhat triangular slice of that box, uh, but it does exist, all right? So any three points uh, that are unique, distinct from one another, that are not collinear, uh, will form a plane. And also, uh, I skipped over it, but through any two points, there is exactly one line. And you can use any two points to name a line. So here's AB, I could call it line AB. I could have AB with this little like hat on with the two arrows. Uh, it could be line BA or BA with a line symbol over it. Uh, you also can name a line using a cursive lowercase letter. Uh, so I could also just say line L if I don't want to describe it based on the points 
that it happens to contain. Let's see. Here we go. Moving right along. Nothing too fancy today. Actually, the you'll notice that the uh, the beginning of geometry happens to be definition heavy, uh, but we need to have vocabulary and language uh, to be able to communicate about the things that we're discovering. So, uh, so it is significant. These are kind of the foundations of of where geometry comes from. Uh, collinear points are points that lie on the same line. Collinear, co right. Cohabitate on the same line. They're they're sharing the line together. And coplanar points are points that lie in the same plane. Not that bad. Let's look at example one, friends. Here we go. We're doing great, guys. This is awesome. All right. Ooh, here we are. Example one: naming points, lines, and planes. Uh, ooh, here we go. Okay, so here's a, a diagram or a sketch. I can see a plane, I can see some lines, I see some points. Uh, it says, give two other names for uh, line PQ. So PQ is this line here, is what they're describing, right? And uh, could would someone want to volunteer another uh, name for that? Yeah? Yeah, line QP, right? And so I'd, I'd label it like that. And uh, maybe someone else, what's another name for it if you can see it? On the graph, a diagram there. Hmm. Yeah, what are you thinking? Or line N, right? So this actually had uh, a couple ways of calling it, right? Is uh is what we got. Name three points that are collinear. Okay. Uh, now. Hmm. I can only assume something is collinear if it actually has a line drawn through it. All right, and that's one of the things that might be frustrating about geometry is people will be like, well, but it looks like it's straight, and that doesn't actually matter. Okay, so uh, as far as three points that are collinear, it looks like the only ones that share a line are S, P, and T. So S, uh, P, and T. Mm-hmm. Right, yeah, so there's like a bunch of different ways of naming line M, and uh, yeah, exactly, yeah. So any of those points that would have sufficed as part of a name would also work. And then four points that are coplanar are going to be like S, uh, P, T, and V. So V is shown as on the plane, Q is off of the plane, but it's on line N that is kind of like rising up out of that plane as you can see. All right, we also have defined terms in geometry. Haha, <laughs> that's helpful to be able to have like definitions for things. And uh, right, so we'll be able to, to use those. Ooh, here we go. Uh -huh -huh -huh. Let's see, we'll talk about, mm, this is great. Good stuff. All right, let's see, defined terms uh, using, using our known words. Uh, right, so we'll have, uh, Segment uh, has endpoints, all right, a line segment AB or segment AB written as, notice, hey, this doesn't have the little arrows on the end of it because it's a segment. It's a portion of a line uh, that has two endpoints. <coughs> so that's a line segment. Uh, so here's a line. A line does travel infinitely far. Uh, and you could also name AB as BA. It doesn't matter which end you call which. Uh, yeah, so line segment A, B. And then once I have a segment, the segment, that's referring to the actual image of that, uh, but I can also talk about the length of a segment as we will tomorrow. Uh, and then there's also this idea of a ray. Let's see, can I line it up? Line it up. Nope, nope, nope. Ah, fine, I'll leave it. Oh, guys, look at that. Mmm, gorgeous. Gorgeous. I lined it up. You guys are jealous. You're jealous. Let's see. Let me uh, zoom back to my standard spot. Bam! All right, here's a ray. A ray has a single endpoint and then travels infinitely in the other a direction. Uh, so it's a portion of a line, um, not the entire line. 
Uh, notice that ray AB and ray BA are different rays. They are opposite in direction of each other. They write different rays. And then here's the idea of actual opposite rays. Uh, so ray CA shares a, an endpoint with ray CB, and they are collinear with one another. These are literally called opposite rays. All right, so that's what the true meaning of opposite rays are. These ones are kind of like opposite in direction, but not fulfilling the actual requirement uh, for that as you see. Let's see, where am I at here? All right, let's, let's get to example two. See how far we can get today. Don't pack up yet, friends. We still got time. Tenemos mucho tiempo, mis amigos. Uh, example dos. <coughs> naming segments rays and opposite rays okay so like part of the thing is, with geometry like i said is is it's going to be communication it's going to require vocabulary it's going to require specificity in how i label things all right so give another name for gh this is gh the segment all right it has endpoints it is not the same as line gh it's not the same as ray gh uh but what's another name for that What's another way I could... Yeah, HG. Not too many possibilities there. Sometimes my Gs look like sixes, but that's fine. No worries. All right. Name all rays with endpoint J. All right. So uh, I could have JE, right? There's a ray. Uh, FJ doesn't have an endpoint. The FJ would have been this, traveling infinitely that way. So it'd have to be JF. Uh, yeah, so rays are the, the specific one. Uh, yeah. And don't forget your little arrow on those. Uh, JH, right? And uh, JG. Now, technically, if I don't, if I draw this, this is called a harpoon. Uh, this would be a vector, which is different than a ray. So you do actually need the full arrow on that. We'll talk about vectors uh, later on. I don't remember, chapter four or something. I might just be making that up. Uh, and then it says, which of these rays are opposite rays? Uh, JE and JF. So those, those guys are ops. And uh, JH and JG. Those are definitely the oppositest of rays. Let's see. Let's actually, uh, we'll, we'll just get to the sketching part. Just our first day of class. We'll do fun. Sketching intersections. So the intersection of two lines, uh, in this case, was point J, notice. Uh, and so intersection would be a common point shared among those uh, figures. And it's possible to have uh, lines intersect, planes intersect. It's possible for them to not intersect. Uh, but here we go. We've got the intersection of two different lines at point A. Uh, it's possible that two lines could be the same line, and they intersect infinitely many times. They're just always intersecting. Is it possible for two lines to intersect twice? Only twice. <coughs> well, it, would, it, would, it would require a curve of sorts, which would then no longer meet the, the line uh, definition for geometry's sake. Uh, but like a squiggle, you could imagine, right, hitting in multiple locations. Uh, and then two planes, you kind of draw two parallelograms here, two planes intersect to form a line, right? So there you go. So that's all we'll get to today. Thanks for watching, internet friends. Have a great day.